Welcome to The Average Shepherd. My name is Father Sam French, and today is Christmas Day. Merry Christmas, everyone. It is my pleasure and privilege to be with you and have your ear on this wonderful occasion in the liturgical calendar. The homily today is called The Greatest Gift Ever Given, and the gospel today is taken from Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 25. So without further ado, let's begin with the homily. Our ideas shape our behavior. The ideas we have about other people inevitably affect the way that we relate to them. Now, this, of course, is especially the case with first impressions. If I was to meet a person in the street and they're polite and they're respectful towards me, I'm quite naturally going to treat them with kindness and courtesy. We all know this. On the other hand, however, if my first encounter with someone is a very negative one, where they're rude or aggressive toward me, naturally, my reaction is going to be defensive and cautious. It's unlikely that I'm going to pursue a fruitful relationship with that person. Well, of course, the same logic here applies to God. What is our first impression of God? What ideas do we hold about the personality of God and his view of us? Because the way that we answer this question, the fundamental idea that we have about God will have a massive impact on the way that we relate personally to God. For an atheist who doesn't believe in God, they will simply have no relationship with him. For someone who perceives God as an angry, intolerant tyrant, they will inevitably have a fearful, unstable relationship with God. If someone believes God is a distant and impersonal power out in the universe, like the force in Star Wars, well, they'll naturally have a cold and non-caring relationship with him, apart from maybe trying to use him from time to time for their own personal gain. We see this in the practice of the law of attraction and, and silly things like manifesting. So we need to ask ourselves again the question, what is God actually like? What is the truest idea of God? Because the honest answer to that question has the power to completely transform your life. Now, fortunately for us, the answer to this question is the entire reason that we celebrate Christmas every year. Today in the gospel we heard, a virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel is a Hebrew name which tells us a whole lot about God. It means God is with us. That is the message of Christmas. God is with us. God is with you right now as I speak to you. See, unlike the other ancient Greek and Roman gods, Zeus, Apollo, Hades, our God is neither distant nor is he tyrannical. Our God is not an impartial force like, like in Star Wars or the gods of Taoism or Hinduism. Our God is different. Our God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Sending Jesus into our lives, into our circumstances, into our chaos to show that there is nothing about our messy, complicated lives that he does not understand, that he does not wish to redeem himself, that he has not experienced himself in the flesh, not even the mysteries of pain and suffering and death which cause us so much fear and anxiety. So what then is the fundamental truth about God? It's this. God is is with us. God is close to us. Or in the words of St. Augustine, God is interior intimo meo, nearer to me than my inmost being. Or if you prefer the much more earthy language of Jesus, God is so close to us that he knows the number of hairs on your head. What is amazing about God is that while at the, at the same time that he is so close to us, God is also holy. He is hallowed, which comes from the Greek hagios, meaning completely set apart, completely other, completely beyond us, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-loving, and completely in control. See, God is not just interior intimo meo, close to us, but God is also superior summo meo, greater than anything we can possibly imagine. That same God who is close to you and yet so far beyond you wants a relationship with you. That same God knows your deepest struggles, your anxieties, your fears, your brokenness, your doubts, your addictions, as well as all of your joys, your hopes, your dreams, the deepest longings of your heart. That same God who is all-powerful wants to do the impossible in your life, to heal you, to break you free from the bonds of sin that hold you down, to lead you into a joy and a fullness of life beyond what you can imagine for yourself. 
Now, Christmas is a time of gift giving. We all know this. Ask yourself, what is the purpose of a gift? The purpose of a gift is to show someone that you love them by giving them something that will fulfill a human desire. For example, I am partial to the occasional drink. I wasn't aware that I gave off that kind of energy. Nevertheless, my parishioners seem to have caught on to this fact, which shows in the fact that they express their love for me in many, many bottles of wine and scotch. Now, a good gift giver is one who thinks about what the other person most wants or desires, and they seek to give something that fulfills that desire. This is why we give gifts at Christmas, because they're like little echoes of the greatest gift ever given to humanity, God himself in the child Jesus, born for our salvation so that through baptism into him, we might have relationship with God. And relationship with God is the deepest longing of the human heart, whether we recognize that fact or not. I think it's quite obvious to me that our world is losing sight of this most fundamental human longing in our secular age. In a culture dominated by materialism, where we are promised happiness in work, in money, possessions, pleasure, power, influence, entertainment, distraction, noise, and yet curiously, our heart never seems to be satisfied by all these things. Despite having everything on demand like never before, having every material desire at the push of a button on our phones, depression and anxiety among millennials and Gen Z has rocketed through the roof over 150% in the last 10 years alone. Because there is only one thing in this world that can truly satisfy the human heart. In the words of C.S. Lewis, if I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. That's the truth. You were made for heaven. This world is filled with all kinds of wonderful gifts, but ultimately, your soul is made for God. God loves you. God wants a relationship with you, not just at Christmas time, but every single day of the year. God wants to meet you in the life of the Catholic Church. He wants to nourish your heart in the Eucharist every Sunday, to illuminate your mind in reading the, His Holy Word in the Scriptures, to heal your pain and your guilt in the beautiful sacrament of confession, to walk with you, to talk with you, to guide you every day in a, in a real and authentic conversation of prayer. To say yes to Christ and his holy church is to say yes to daily relationship with God. This is to receive the greatest gift that the world has ever known. Jesus Christ, our Savior and the Prince of Peace. God bless you all. Merry Christmas. Thank you for listening. Keep the faith. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.